Hey guys, so this is going to be the second video of kind of my learning journey with BIM and uh, ML and leveraging just the information within a Revit model. Um, the idea is to leverage uh, data from multiple Revit models and I'll just briefly go through this um, video by video going through each step that I've listed here in the Word document and kind of briefly talking about it. So. It, and to keep this in mind, it's going to alter kind of a little bit here and there based off of what I learn and what I run into. And the idea is I'm going to share this with you and um, and then ultimately share what I kind of get out of this so that you guys can use it, leverage it for yourself as well. So if we're looking at this, uh, I, I already did this video, so I'm going to check this off. Um, and I've altered this a little bit, so I'm not... I'm not going to leverage Dynamo is heavy because uh, I have to have a Revit model open tied into that into Revit and then extracting the data. I, I could probably run something that could extract a whole bunch of data from a bunch of models, but it seem that seems to be kind of slow. And using Clarity, I can actually export data from every single model that's already set up on that and that's using Imagine it Clarity, uh, their system, and uh, I'll share a link for that below. And I wanna extract the information using that and then just tie into it using Python. And uh, I find that that's really easy and I can get all the data or information that I need from the model to start uh, you know, using it for visualization, trying to understand the data, you know, what it is that I do or don't need. Um, and then ultimately getting it into Azure machine learning and start, uh, start using, uh, different algorithms on it to see which one, uh, is the best and what am I, I what I'm, what I'm getting the most out of. So, um, so I'm going to close this and we'll talk about this portion. So we're on here, the BIM and ML learning journey, uh, O2 SQL Server. So I'm going to be leveraging Python for this. Uh, it's it's pretty basic stuff. It isn't too difficult, and I'll share all the code with everybody. Um, the interface that I'm using is through, or the IDE or whatever you want to call it, is through Jupyter Notebooks, and it seems pretty intuitive and easy to understand. So if I close this and open up that, we can take a look. Um, so this essentially is the code that I'm working with. And up here at the top, I've started adding some links just to uh, helpful information specific to this workflow. And um, I just got the variety of links that I have had to leverage to kind of understand um, how to do some of this stuff. And then I'm also going to post the, the YouTube videos in here as well so that you guys can look at them. And then um, there's also some Markdown links. And Markdown is actually a separate kind of text editor almost. And if I click into this, you'll see it, it's just a way of um, kind of showing this a little bit better instead of just having uh, commented out links. So I can actually uh, run this and then it comes out like this and it's formatted and it looks, you know, pretty nice so that you guys can get in here and just click on the links and go straight to those pages. Click on this, it'll take you straight to the video. Um, and the idea is just to kind of have it easy to understand. You understand the code. You under, you have links and references you could use, uh, kind of giving you everything you need to essentially uh, use this process. So if I keep scrolling down past that, we I've just imported some libraries that I've used so far. Some of these I haven't touched. Um, I'm kind of still working and working through them and kind of seeing what they their cap capabilities are. Uh, below that, I have. Uh, the SQL Server. So this is the uh, SQL Server, pretty much the code that I would need to tie into a SQL Server that we have on site. And this may change depending on where you're getting your data. I'm just getting it from here. The process is the same, even if you're pulling data from uh, just your local machine, you just may have to alter, you know, what you're looking at. Uh, for example, if you're looking at just a bunch of an Excel or a bunch of Excel documents or PDFs, there's ways of extracting that information as well. It may not be this particular um, uh, package, which is PyODBC, Pi um, but 
there's something out there usually. Uh, I've worked with a number of different things, uh, different packages that can pull data out of different sources. And I think Pandas is one of them that can pull out Excel and, and whatnot. But for this one, I've used PyODBC to, um, and I'm, I may not be saying that right. I don't know how they pronounce it, but um, I use this to tie into a SQL server look at the server then the specific database that I want and then I put the username and password I don't have that up because I um, uh, don't want to share that but uh, you know just alter this specific to your uh, your company's um, uh, database or your personal whatever it is and then below that I'm actually just selecting from a specific database I'm grabbing a table out of there and then you see that below um, it's been executed and this is kind of what it looks like it's comma separated it's not that pretty and then below that we actually query it and we just select the columns we want and then we then just format a database and then we export out the queries and then the SQL server which is this information so the database rooms and then you pull that out and it's it's pretty formatted I'm going to scroll below because this, none of this is live. So that's why I'm getting all these errors. But if I look here, um, this is kind of what it's going to look like when we pull it out and actually format it to something. You can, you can just essentially pull this out without running any code up here. You don't have to print this out. Um, you could just set this server up, come down here and just query out the specific uh, columns that you want. And then you could print your database which all you have to do is uh, print whatever the name is so for example if I wanted to print this uh, data frame the room one for this information I would just copy this and then paste it down here and then run it I'm not gonna run it because it's not gonna do anything but give me a bunch of errors but if I run this um, it's gonna give me a, the list of all the elements that are in there I think it, up to a certain point if there's a bunch of information in there I think it goes you know uh, so much and then it skips the rest and it just shows what's at the end but you can if you just want to get an idea of what the data looks like you can do head and then uh, just do that and it's gonna I think print out five you could specify it and say three if you wanted um, just different ways that you can look at your data pretty quickly to see uh, what columns or what information is there um, and I think after I've identified that, what I want to do is actually start manipulating that data, um, trying to identify what it is that I do or don't want, so that when I get it into the machine learning pr uh, uh, point, that you know it, it's going to pull that data in, it's going to actually run a, a good, a good model, or it's going to get a good model out of that that we can actually work with instead of having a bunch of miscellaneous data points that you know don't actually have any causality on you know the end result that I want which is going to be you know specific families or specific rooms to specific buildings and trying to you know anticipate what they're going to be um, so that will be in a later video I'm gonna still practice and figure out some of that stuff if you want to check out Jupyter Notebooks and um, uh, and Indiconda, which is actually a download that I, I use to get Jupyter Notebooks, I definitely recommend it. I'll share that in the comments below. And essentially, Indiconda, um, it's kind of nice because it, it downloads, and if you have a bunch of security on your computer, it generally, it, it'll still download, and um, it works just fine. All you have to do is run a com um, Indiconda command uh, prompt, and then you just go in there and type in Jupyter Notebooks, and it'll open this up to browse out to a a notebook that you've already created and then you can start running code from there um, I'll share that link in, and um, also what's nice is it all these packages if you don't have them already on your machine you actually have to go in there and install each one and Anaconda it already has all those in there or at least it has a good amount of them already in there and then when you download them you're kind of good to go to start running stuff at least with the most popular uh, packages um, so I want to jump back into the word document we'll just briefly talk about what we're gonna say or what the next video is and 
So I've talked about this. The next one is going to be extracting the data. We kind of already did that. Um, I kind of want to extract the data. Uh, so essentially just do, do a little bit of data cleaning or whatnot to make sure that what we're getting is um, relevant to what our end result is going to be. Uh, I also have prepping and cleaning there here as well. Uh, I think I'm going to move that to after I run some algorithms because I may have to do more depending on what's going to happen and you know at that state um, depending on you know how those algorithms run how good my models are and stuff so we'll see about that later but for now um, yeah extracting data trying to figure out you know what data is best to be extracted um, is there you know different um, or tables within the database I need to combine so that I can get more robust robust data you know, how am I going to go in there and grab um, not just one uh, table, but, you know, um, maybe a hundred different tables from, you know, a hundred different projects so that I can get really robust data so I can start using it for machine learning purposes. So, yeah, we'll talk about this next. Um, hopefully this gives you an idea where I'm going. Um, I'll share all this information with you. Hopefully this gives you some insight on how I'm approaching this this problem. Um, please, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. Comment below. Thanks a lot for watching.